All right, so we're moving into our second section on the cell cycle in eukaryotic cells, and this is all about mitosis. So we've learned all the different stages, the G1, the S, the G2, and now we're into the details of what actually happens in mitosis. So your success criteria after this video should be, you should be able to analyze all the different details for each stage of mitosis and compare the differences between plant and animal cells when they go through mitosis, because there are some key differences. So first of all, let's quickly go back and remember why do cells actually reproduce asexually? In other words, why do they divide? We've got growth, repair and replacement and procreation. And when we're talking about mitosis, we're really talking about the first two here. So in multicellular organisms, we need to grow. So we need to make more cells to do that. And if we have any damage to our tissue or we need to repair it or replace dead cells, we need to divide our cells using mitosis to get more cells. Procreation, remember, is for prokaryotes um, when they're doing binary fission. All right, there's some key vocabulary that you need to know to actually learn how mitosis works. So the first one we have is chromosome. Chromosomes are what we call a single molecule of DNA that's found in the nucleus. And as humans, we have 46 separate chromosomes. And the DNA, as you can see in the diagram here, it's all super coiled and wrapped around these little proteins here called histones, like beads on a string, and they all coil together. And then it super coils together to make one chromosome. So one molecule of DNA is one chromosome. That finished product, that material of the DNA plus the protein, we call chromatin. That's just the name of the material, making chromosomes. Even though, as we saw in that diagram, we often see chromosomes with that classic X structure, that only happens after the S phase, which we'll talk about in a second. Most of the time, chromosomes are just sitting as chromatin, uncoiled, and they're not coiled into that X shape, and they just look like basically spaghetti in a bowl. They're not tightly coiled. All right. So now we're getting into what chromosomes look like before and after they copy themselves. So remember in the G1 phase, chromosomes haven't copied themselves. So we can imagine them like this. They're just one molecule of DNA that's all super coiled up together. And we often just draw it as this structure here. But after the S phase, remember S is synthesis, which means copying or producing. So after the S phase and when we're in the G2 and mitosis phases, chromosomes look like this X shape. And that's just because in the S phase they've copied themselves. So one side of the X is a brand new copy of the original DNA strand in the chromosome. And that's because the whole point of mitosis is to make two brand new cells. So we need to copy the DNA. Once we've got our replicated chromosome, we call each half a sister chromatid. So here's one sister chromatid and here's two sister chromatids. And that little white section in the middle here, we call the centromere. It's just made of proteins and it holds those two little sister chromatids together. Here's another view of a chromosome actually un under an electron microscope. And you can really clearly see all these little strands really showing how a chromosome is made up of just that one little wound together DNA molecule. We also need to know a new organelle, and these are called centrioles, so add them to your organelle knowledge and list of all the organelles in a cell. Here's what they look like, just two little cylinders, and they're often, they normally sit next to each other like that. They are part of the cytoskeleton, 
So they're made of proteins, and in particular, microtubules. Tubules. During the G2 phase, they copy themselves. So you have two lots of two centrioles. And the most important thing they do is they make these long microtubule proteins called spindle fibers. And that's these little strands here that look like legs of a daddy long leg spider. And they're really important in mitosis as we'll learn later. Okay, so onto mitosis. And remember, we're at this stage of the cell cycle. Here's an overview of all of the cell cycle, and it's a really useful acronym to help you remember the cell cycle. It's just IPMAT. I-P-M-A-T and cytokinesis at the end. So IPMAT-C is a nice acronym for the whole of the cell cycle. Mitosis is only PMAT in the middle because interphase is G1, S, and G2. Then we have mitosis, and then we have cytokinesis at the end. So there's four main phases in mitosis, and let's see what happens in each one. Interphase is before mitosis, but here's what some cells look like. The chromosomes aren't condensed, and that's the key. They're just unwound like that bowl of spaghetti we saw earlier. Prophase is the first phase of mitosis, and this cell down here is a typical prophase cell because the chromosomes are condensed, and you can really see them as uh, a thicker structure. And that's the first key point. In the prophase, the chromosomes condense, and they look like that classical X shape. The centrioles start to move towards each of the different poles, which just means to each end. And they're starting to make their spindle fibers. And the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane is breaking down because the whole point of mitosis is to separate the chromosomes into two and make two brand new nuclei. So we have to get rid of the old nucleus first. Metaphase is the second phase. And this is a classic metaphase cell here. You can see those chromosomes lined up along the middle. And that's the key part of metaphase. Meta meaning middle or average. And you can see here the chromosomes get pulled to the center of the cell and it's the spindle fibers of the centrioles that are actually doing that. So you can see all those little spindle fibers are attached to the centromeres and they're pulling the chromosomes and lining them up really nicely along the middle of the cell. And we call that middle of the cell the metaphase plate where they're lining up. Okay, now that the cells have lined up, in metaphase, we go into anaphase, and here's a, an anaphase cell here. And the key thing we look for in anaphase is the chromosomes have been pulled apart and they're being separated into their two half sister chromatids. So what happens is the centromeres split apart and then those spindle fibers are basically like a whole lot of people pulling on a tug of war rope. And those spindle fibers pull the sister chromatids apart. These ones, get pulled over to the left and these ones get pulled over to the right and they have to be aligned perfectly and it's the spindle fibers that control all of this precise alignment the final phase of mitosis is telophase or telophase here's a telophase cell here and it almost looks like two cells so the first thing that happens is we're starting to form two brand new nuclei here. You can see the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope is starting to form again. Those nicely condensed X-like chromosomes, they unwind back to a bowl of spaghetti. And now once the nucleus has formed, well our two new nuclei have formed, mitosis is finished. We've got our two nuclei and each nucleus has an exact copy of all the chromosomes and that's exactly what we need because you don't want to lose any genetic information. So my mitosis is finished but we can't forget cytokinesis and this is the final stage of the cell actually dividing in the cell cycle. It's slightly different in plants and animals so let's compare the difference. In animals 
All that happens is there's a whole lot of special proteins that basically pinch together and get smaller and smaller and smaller until they basically break the cell in half by pinching the plasma membrane. And now once that membrane has broken, we've made our two brand new cells. In plants, however, they've got a cell wall, remember. So you can't just pinch a cell wall because it's much more rigid than a cell membrane. So for plants, they actually elongate and the whole cell gets longer. And then this little cell plate starts to form in the middle here, which is just starting to build a brand new cell wall. And then once that wall extends all the way across, then the cell membranes have been pinched in half. And then we finally have two new plant cells ready to go and do their thing. All right, here's a summary of the difference between plants and animals going through mitosis. So animals have centrioles, which produce spindle fibers. Plants don't have centrioles. It's just the cytoskeleton that moves um, the chromosomes around during mitosis, there's no centrioles at all. Animal cells don't have a cell plate during cytokinesis, but plant cells have a cell plate because that builds their brand new cell wall. Okay, so once we've finished mitosis and we've gone through cytokinesis, then we're ready to start off a brand new cell cycle and begin it all again.